Thank you for joining me again for 1 Peter. Today I want to read 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. 4. Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Peter is continuing to speak to his readers about how to behave when they are dealing with people who despise them and ill-treat them. And in this section, Peter does this by locating his teaching back in the text of the Old Testament. Best way to build up the people of God is to tell them what the Bible says, because that's the end of all argument, and that's where God speaks. So Peter quotes from Psalm 34 in these verses. Why does he choose Psalm 34? Some scholars think that early Christian teaching, teaching of disciples, used a number of basic passages from the Old Testament, and this is one of them. And we've seen Peter use Psalm 34 earlier in this letter, and he, there are other places in the New Testament where Psalm 34 seems to be behind the words of the New Testament. I want to draw attention to the fact then that Peter is saying that, a, that the people of God are people who have God's blessing. Look at the first two lines. Whoever loves life and wants to see good days. That's an Old Testament way of talking of the person God blesses. In the Old Testament, God's blessing was very often shown by the giving of good, long life. But Peter knows, and his readers know, and you and I know too, that God has blessed us in a different way. We have an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled and unfading, reserved in heaven for us, who by God's power are being kept for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last days. And these things have been secured for us by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So we too are people who have entered into blessing. We have good days ahead of us. They are the gift of God. Therefore, that should inspire the way in which we live before non-Christians, even when they are difficult and demanding. Which brings us to the first part of, uh, to the middle part of verse 10. Notice from this point on, there seem to be a string of verbs. Let him keep his tongue from evil, his lips from deceit. Let him turn away from good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. They are all things that we must do, according to Peter. So the Bible is saying, this is what you ought to do if you're a person blessed by God. As there's a string of verbs, and all those verbs are commands. So becoming a Christian is not just a matter of floating along. 
It's about hearing God and responding obediently to his voice in, in the scriptures. Um, even in those difficult parts of our Christian living. So Peter is arguing that they need to be doing these things. And notice, the Bible always picks the nice, easy things to do, does it not? It tells you to restrain your tongue from evil. Wow. And his lips from speaking deceit, of deliberately turning toward good, of seeking harmonious relationships and pursuing them. So in your dealings with non-Christian people, people who question your faith, people who belittle you, says Peter, make sure that you are the person who lives in this way and one of the things that will help you live in this way is that God has been gracious to you and there is a glorious future ahead of you. But you may still say, but how could I be a person like that? How can I turn away my, my, uh, my how, how can I keep my tongue from speaking evil? How can I always turn toward good when people treat me badly? How can that happen? Peter has heard what you're saying because in verse 12 he goes on to say, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. There's not a situation into which you and I go as Christian people where we speak the word of God, particularly to people who don't particularly want to hear it or like us very much, that God does not know all about. So the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. If there was no other word about prayer in the Bible, that line alone would be the greatest possible incentive for prayer. His ears are open to our prayers constantly. So in the midst of trying to commend the Christian life, of trying to answer those who question us graciously, here, says Peter, be assured of God's help. But you may say, what if it all goes wrong? You can imagine a person in Peter's time saying, I'm a slave. What if my witness, if I try to make my witness for Jesus um, all very wholesome and winning, and what if it all goes wrong? After all, these aren't people who love God. These are people who have not yet embraced the grace of God. Well, the face of the Lord, says Peter, in verse 12, is against those that do evil. So there's going to always be a restraining hand of God. A hand that seeks to restrain evil. There's going to be a God who, at the end of the day, will judge evil. So that should make us bold as we live our lives in this world. Each of us probably have to acknowledge, when we look at a passage like this, we're not particularly like this. But we need to seek God's help as we witness to our faith particularly before those who do not want to hear us or do not like us very much, we need to take from a passage like this encouragement to be the people who live in a way that commends the gospel because of our Christian hope that inspires us and to reckon upon the fact that in the midst of that struggle there's one in whose eyes we are always precious, to whose ears 
our prayers are special. That's the God who enables us to serve him. And he is the one that Peter commends to his struggling, persecuted readers. God grant that we may do the same. Amen.